Hey there, how's it going guys? Today I'm going to talk about this recent acquisition. What you see here and here are the Monitor 2C and the Monitor 2C stand. Well, one of my first computers I ever had as a kid was an Apple 2C. Uh, I recently picked this up locally here in Portland and uh, these 2Cs aren't super hard to find. But when I had this as a kid, I had the computer and I had the matching monitor and stand. That's what we have here. It's a monitor, this is a nine inch green CRT, and there's a matching metal stand that goes under the monitor and allows you to put the computer underneath and kind of have it all set up as how you want to work. I had this complete setup as a kid. I also had a mouse. For the longest time, I've been looking for a 2C and the matching monitor and stand so I can kind of recreate my youth. This was something I recently found online and it was shipped to me and one of the things is it was said it was untested. So I have no idea if this even works and um, let's unbox it and take a look at it and see the condition. So the box is kind of cool. Apple logo on the side, Apple 2C or Apple Monitor 2C. And on the top it's kind of interesting. We have a customs declaration, just says monitor and a value of $350. Uh, and there's a date on the bottom here, it says March 14th, 1986. Interesting is there's a label on here that says McDonnell Douglas Corporation. If we open this up, there's the monitor. No bag, but original packing materials in here. That's kind of nice. And one thing that's cool about these Apple monitors is they're pretty compact and they had a nice carry handle. The Apple IIc was meant to be a portable computer, you know, C for compact, has a handle on it itself. Well, so does the monitor, so very easy to lift this out. All right, here's the monitor. Let's set it aside for a second and take a look at the stand. Okay, the stand box is pretty hilarious because right off the bat it says, Fragile. Open this end. Fragile? This thing is a metal, heavy metal stand. There's pretty much nothing fragile about it. Picture of the stand. And yes, it's got this label. So here we go again. Uh, W.A. Spradley, FPO, New York, New York. What do you think that is? But look, it's addressed to McDonnell Douglas Astronautics in St. Louis, Missouri. So what was this used by? Defense contractors for something at some point? So inside this box, we have the stand. All right, so the stand looks great. Um, it's a little dirty and dusty, but that's to be expected. There's some yellowing on the knobs here. So what's interesting is the monitor attaches using a rather thick screw here, attaches to this. And this is a tilt stand. Things here allow you to angle the monitor. I think we can unscrew these and loosen them. But essentially the monitor sits on top of this. And then the computer, where you put the handle down to pivot it up, goes under like that. Online, looking around for this, I found plenty of monitors that were alone without the stand. I found lots of computers, of course, without the monitor or stand. But if you don't have this stand, to me at least it's not a complete it's not a complete set. So the monitor is just really cute. It's nine inches, so you can see my hand easily covers the whole screen. So it's a small screen, and it's a green phosphor. Now looking closely at this right off the bat, it's a little dirty, but I don't see any actual physical damage to the monitor. Uh, nothing that's not that's going to be permanent. And looking at the screen, at least while it's off here, I don't see any burn-in. So on this side here, we have the contrast control. And if we look at the back of the monitor here, we have the IEC power input. We have various controls. This looks like vertical position, vertical size. We have a brightness control, and we have the composite input. This is just a monochrome monitor. Now looking here, this was manufactured in December 1984, so I think that's on the early side of Apple IIc's. Serial number is 52,286. And if we look on the other side here, all we have is one control which is the power switch. It's a bit awkward because you know it's not obvious when you're trying to turn it off and on, but the funny thing is, from all those years ago, I still have the muscle memory of turning that on and off. I can just reach and hit that control perfectly. Let's give it a try and turn it on. Okay, I have the monitor plugged into my test pattern generator off camera over there, and the power is connected. So let's turn it on and see what happens. All right, it's working. Now the contrast control is definitely scratchy. Hey, I'm, I'm pleased here. Let's uh, cycle through a couple of these. All right, 
Yeah, I'm gonna need a little deoxit there. And these controls on the back. So that's brightness. And we have vertical hold. And we have vertical size. Horizontal size is something you have to control with pots inside the monitor. So that's exciting, it works. I'm, I was really unsure if it would or not. Sharpness actually doesn't seem so bad on this monitor. So yes, this is the highest, the highest resolution part of this test pattern. You can see it sort of goes from over here down more and more. And um, yep, looks pretty clear. All right, here's the actual test. I uh, have a 2C really plugged into it. Let's see how this works. Very nice. Yeah, so there's definitely some issues where I'm going to need to adjust the vertical horizontal size so it maybe fills the screen a little more. It's a small enough screen already. We don't need the picture shrunk so small into the middle. Sharpness is about what I recall too. All right, cool. So the monitor works. I have it on the stand as it should be. This is bringing back crazy memories for me. One of the issues with the 2C is look at the size of this power brick. Now the cord's long enough that you could put it on the floor, but this thing is like a boat anchor. So for something that is compact and portable, this probably a third the weight of the entire computer. But let's uh, turn on the monitor, turn the computer on, and let's put in a disc. Look at that dazzle draw. I used to use the heck out of this program. So this would have been one of the things that you played with when you first got to see when you first unpacked the box and set it up getting down to basic would have been an original copy this is this is a copy of course at least it's on an apple disc protoss 1.0 wow from 1983. it's nice how quickly discs load on the apple II versus commodore 64. Steve Wozniak was just so good at figuring out, you know, how to make the disk interface work in a cheap and fast way. Uh, compared to the Commodore 1541 disk drives, they were so expensive and um, they were very slow. Which is just so silly. You get, you know, one of the nice things about these monochrome monitors on the Apple II is the graphics are just really sharp. If you have this plugged into a color screen, you'll get color like in the bottom of this Apple logo. But anytime you have a line that's on its own like this, you'll see a color shift because this is artifact color. You'll see a green or a purple line usually. So when you use it on a monochrome screen like this, it really does make the Apple II look a lot better. Okay, I know it works, so I'm gonna take this apart. It looks like we take these two screws off here. All right, all right. Okay, that comes off. And the top, if I recall, slides out like that. To go further, I think we need to take these top screws out. Okay, I have the monitor off the stand and I need to take these bottom screws out. So I have all four screws out from around this surround, but I think I need to take the controls off. This is the contrast knob. And then there's the power switch and they are screwed into the plastic. It's very compact inside the monitor here. Everything is very very tightly packed in here okay those are those are back inside the screen now okay. there we go oh the power switch is a pain there we go so there it is Here's a date code, December 15th, 1984. And yeah, in the back of the screen, these are the controls that are exposed, but there's another control here, which I wouldn't be surprised if this is a sub brightness control. Uh, sorry for the shaky cam, I've gone handheld. So looking inside the monitor, definitely looks like the number of hours on this screen are pretty low. You don't see the telltale signs of say, like the uh, buildup of that kind of black soot on the high voltage lead. There's the flyback down there and it all looks very clean. There's a little bit of dust on the CRT here. Look how nice the coil is here. Look, I'm saying this monitor hasn't been used that much. Okay, so this disassembly process is a lot harder than I thought. I have this Sam's computer file here that shows how to disassemble the monitor. And um, this picture of the monitor looks nothing like 
the one I have. Uh, there's no top board, there's just the bottom board and the power supply. In fact, it, it seems to say that you can actually remove the entire chassis and the CRT from the front case here. And I have the screws missing. See the screws taken out there? The CRT is not affixed to the chassis. It's held in between the chassis and the front ca case. So there's no way to do that. So to get this off, first you have to take the screws off to loosen this top crazy board off. Then you can remove the neck board. Then you can unplug the two coils here for the deflection. One on each side connects to the bottom boards. You take those off. There's also the ground cable from the DAG ground that goes to the neck board. So you gotta unplug that. Of course, you have to remove the high voltage anodes. Then there are two screws on the bottom here and this entire assembly lifts off. Look at this insanity. You have to be super careful not to bump any of this because of course it break. It's so easy to break stuff. And then this comes off. There is still the power LED connect, which is this wire here. All right, so I unplugged the power LED. Just use needle nose to do that. That's gonna be interesting to get back on. It is keyed, so it only goes on one way. So the LED goes through it. So well, there's the chassis off. So now the CRT can come out. Lift it up this way. Clinton, Taiwan. Part number, I guess it's this one here. C-E-U-L-L 76-1 slash 4-A-1-T-E. There it is, there's the front. And uh, this is the power LED. Well, there we go. Uh, this monitor's working, I'm really excited. So first step was just to test it. Of course, it's working great. So I've disassembled it. I'm going to retrobrite the plastic pieces and then we're going to reassemble the monitor, cross my fingers that it works, and actually give it a little bit of a tune up and that'll all be in part two of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this interesting. Please uh, comment and put questions in the comment section below and thumbs up if you like this or thumbs down if you didn't like it. And subscribe for more videos. Thank you, bye.